My mentor's death surprised me with a raging torrent of painful emotions. Gladys Jackson is my mentor, my friend, my teacher, and my confidant. She passed away this weekend. I want you to hear as I was sharing the pain that I dealt with while I was hanging up my clothes. I was sharing with our online church, God's Church of Love. I want you to hear what I went through and how it was dealt with miraculously. You got to hear this in case you have to go through the same thing. Okay, so what ended up happening is after I found out she had passed, I was fine. Now I'm in the hall, I'm in the hallway hanging up the the clothes in my closet. And as I'm hanging up the clothes, it's like this thought, these thoughts just start bombarding my mind. All of a sudden I am being rushed down memory lane at warp speed. And I'm remembering all the people that used to laugh at her all the people that used to look down on her, all the attitudes that used to be in the church she and I both attended, all the hurts I had encumbered, I mean, I had uh, accumulated down through the years that God had to take me through years of healing in order to get out of my system. It was so much bombarding me. It was overwhelming, and I had to, after I finished hanging up the clothes, I sat down on the recliner and boo-hooed my eyes out. I couldn't do anything with it but cry. And I cried and cried and cried and said, Lord, I really need you to take this hurt out. I really need you to take this emotional pain out because all of the stuff I thought you healed me from why is it bombarding me now? So, after I said that, the Lord led me to scripture. But I did go through a lot of I talked through it because I felt like I needed to vent. So I vented about the things, about how she had been done wrong by the body of Christ, how she had been treated funny, and she knew it she loved and forgave anyway. And how I had been treated funny and like a second class citizen, like the oddball that rolled out from under a rock from the streets into the church. And they had to take a long time to get used to me with my rawness. So it was a whole lot of giggling and snickering and hee 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 and we know you're special and all the little snide remarks that I had to deal with, the rejection, the thank you, but no thank you. You know, it was just so much of that. And and when Gladys started her ministry, I stayed at the church where she and I used to be members of because God had not released me to leave. And God would not release me until I had released all that anger and hurt. So as time went on and the Lord saw that my spirit was clear, he released me. Anyway, Milton and I ended up being members of her church. Now, this is what happened yesterday, just to give you a little feeling of, of where that came from. Gladys and I, we used to pour our heart out to each other. I mean, it was like mentor, mentory. We were just back and forth with that. And... Uh, Last night, it all came out. It was like a, a, a great big upchuck. Well, when I got through and I was asking God to now clean my heart of all of it, just get all the crumbs out, get everything out that has to do with that whole painful past. I didn't realize it hurt that bad, but this is what God gave me. I'm going to read it gave me Psalms 30. He led me to Psalms 30. And I knew it had to do with him, my prayer, but I didn't know anything else. I couldn't remember what else it said. And when he gave it to me, I read it out loud. And after I read it out loud, I realized I couldn't tell you when it happened, but all the anger, all the hurt, all that emotion 
that was that was whirling around me was gone. Check this out. Starting at verse one. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and I sure did. <clears throat> and thou hast healed me. I read that thing out loud. It says, verse 3, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Because I was, I was getting deeper and deeper in it, y'all. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> so anyway, what I wanted to share with that is how thoroughly and how quickly God moves when he knows we're hurting, when he knows that we're battling things. And the first thing I wanted to do was what everybody else wants to do. I want to get on the phone. I wanted to call Lynn. I wanted to call Lynette. I wanted to call Peter. I, w I had the list. I wanted to call Andrea. I want to call all these folks to have, uh, to pray for me and, you know, all of that. And I said, what am I doing? I, I said, don't you dare. I'm talking to myself. Don't you dare touch that phone. You reaching past God who's right here so that people can pat you on the back and you can wallow in your self-pity with, with an audience. No, don't you dare. You deal with this. God can handle you. He doesn't need help. And it was gone. <laughs> it was gone. It didn't take an hour. It didn't take two hours. Matter of minutes, y'all. And I sat there and I said, Lord, I don't feel it anymore. You stilled the storm. Peace be still. It's gone. I don't know when it left. I didn't feel it when it left, but it's gone. Mm, 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 mm. And that's my testimony, y'all. <laughs> 